Hey everybody, I'm Lisa All in the Education Department at Pittsburgh Ballet Theater and we are here at PBT Studios today in the Strip District of Pittsburgh and we're going to talk for a few minutes about The Sleeping Beauty which is coming up next weekend, May 19th through 21st at the Benidim Center. And with me here today are Artistic Director Adam W. McKinney, Costume Director Krista McLean, and Principal Artist Yoshiaki Nakano. And we're going to take a look today at the costume for Carabas. So most of the costumes in this production are from Charlotte Ballet. So we rented the production, both the costumes and the set pieces from Charlotte Ballet. And the costumes are gorgeous. They're dazzling and beautiful and you'll be blown away when you see them on stage next weekend. But um, we wanted to create our own costume for Carabas. We had kind of our own vision for that. And I wanted to start with Adam, and just if you could tell us a little bit about the character of Carabas. So, folks who haven't seen the ballet version of the Sleeping Beauty may not know who Carabas is. Can you give us just a little backstory on the character? I'd be happy to. So, Carabas is the antagonist in this ballet. Uh, during the prologue, the king and queen. Uh, invite fairies to the christening of their daughter, Princess Aurora. And uh, Catalibet, who is um, in the royal court, forgets to invite the fairy Carabas. And Carabas has feelings about not being invited and disturbs the party and, in effect, um, communicates that on her 16th birthday, Princess Aurora will be pricked by a poison spindle and will die. And so that is how Carabas comes into the scene, feelings hurt and uh, with an antagonist, an antagonizing nature. And so why were we, why were you thinking you wanted to create a new costume? What was it about the, um, the uh, your new vision to, um, that you wanted to create a new Carabas? Yeah, in previous versions, Carabas was not a dancing role. It was a role of mimicry, of miming. And uh, we wanted to take advantage of the skills of our artists in the ballet and turn it into a dancing role, not only an acting role. And so I worked closely with Kristen to design and envision what the costume and other accoutrement would be for the title role of Carabas. And so what were some of the things that you needed in the costume for, um, you know, to make it a dancing role? What had to change from costumes previous that we've used for Carabas? So in previous iterations uh, for the characterization of Carabas, in terms of the costuming, it was, you know, a hoop skirt and a bodice and sleeves and a crown. Uh, in this version, Carabas needed to move and to dance. And so what you'll see in terms of wearing what, uh, what Yoshi is wearing, Yoshi has free legs to allow for turns and jumps, also has a bodice and has hanging fabric so that as Yoshi moves, that there's also uh, movement there. Uh, the colors and some of the textiles, I, I welcome Kristen to speak to, but it really was to allow for freedom of movement and to also communicate uh, the characterization of this role. So Kristen, what, how did this work? So Adam comes to you and says, I would like a new costume for Carabas. <laughs> how does that work on your end? Well, it took me a minute to kind of get to the ultimate vision of uh, the mobility and uh, danceability of the costume. I kept trying to kind of make what we had work, which sometimes you just have to strip it down, start over. Um, Adam did come in and kind of had a little bit of a word cloud free association, okay. which was really helpful for me to hear words like um, swampy, cold, dark, we were kind of in the wilderness, we were, um, I started getting images of like algae and mossy and barnacles and, and as that kind of, as he was speaking, I kind of got this idea of, first of all, stripping down any need for traditional fashion clothing and just more of a, a suggestion of body covering. And then also using mesh and lycra to essentially change Carabas's skin itself. Um, so 
we're getting away from um, a sort of humanish character to now a creature. And some of that, uh, I started to sort of apply my own interpretation of the character to kind of think about how um, some of that monstrousness and villainy might have overtaken them a little bit. And so this is ultimately not the finished product. But <laughs> what we're going to see is this motif here. This is actually leather sequins which is really kind of interesting and fun, and I thought it had a really cool texture in that kind of mossy, but I keep going back to barnacles. I don't think that Carabas <laughs> has anything to do with the ocean, but that's just what I'm thinking of. And so this texture will then carry over into this side and kind of travel down uh, their appendages. So it's sort of something that has kind of infested Carabas a little bit. Um, but there's still kind of this uh, side that's maybe untouched a little bit. Um, with the corset, I also thought, or the corset and the, um, what do you call it, a kind of a skirt, mm -hmm. I just thought that being exiled as Carabas is, they might just sort of need to scrounge for materials, and so it kind of gives the idea of, here's this, slap it on, here's that, let's tuck it in and, you know, tuck and kind of uh, tack things here and there, and then of course, you have to make it a little bit fabulous. So this, the, there will be um, some more sparkles, some more kind of hints of metallic elements, um, and then also kind of weaving in that same idea of dark wilderness. We have crow feathers. That was actually Yoshi's idea to, to put some feathers on here. Um, yeah, so we're kind of pulling from nature, kind of the darkness of nature, and also kind of um, what would make an impact at court with you know the human world as well. And we also have a, a headpiece here that Kaylee in our shop has made. Um, it's going to have a lot more going on too, but it'll have the same elements of kind of twi twigs sticking in and out and little bits and baubles, kind of what a crow would collect <laughs> and kind of just put into its own little treasure trove. Carabas, in my mind at least, sort of just like, oh, I like that. Let's stick it on there, <laughs> you know. So. Um, there will be a lot more to this, and I think it'll have more of a statement when uh, it hits the stage, but hopefully it's it's working so far. Yeah, I didn't realize that sometimes dancers have a role in helping to create a costume. So were you just trying the costume on and you were, you were kind of envisioning? Yeah, I think it, it's helpful to have costume and be in the carabos, you know, just be in the uh, rehearsal clothes. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to get into your character, but when you have crown, uh, you know, butters and you know all that stuff, it makes me feel more like you know, the, it it lifts my spirit to another yes. level. Yeah. Yeah. And I always trust a costume shop to make you know yes. movable, um, breathable. Um, so like I, I'm, you know, I'm able to dance mm -hmm. freely. Do the additional choreography that Adam choreographed for. Yeah, for this I remember role, Adam. Really cool. Yeah, I remember Adam told me. So let's make couples not just making mean faces. So I was like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm really excited to dance and perform. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, there's a whole another element to this costume, which is very cool. Can you describe Adam a little bit about what the thinking was for this extra element of the costume? Yes, so as mentioned, uh, Carabas creates a poison spindle, and that is the spindle on which Aurora pricks her finger. And so there is a sense of spiderness, spider weaving, and so together with Curtis Dunn, Greg Coppolo, all in production, Kristen, the artists, and myself, we devised uh, a spider chariot on which, or in which, uh, Carabas um, uh, moves and enters the scene. So Kristen can speak to uh, some of the other elements, but know that this will be closed. Um, we will pipe in smoke so that as Carabas exits the spider, there's a sense of wonderment uh, there. Uh, but it really is to, to look at some of the animalistic underworld components of the character. So what is it? What's it, what's it made out of? <laughs> lots of PVC pipe, lots of foam. The structure inside is um, wood 
shapes kind of framework on uh, wheels casters, I think. Um, and I don't know all the hardware terms. I'm a, I'm a seamstress. Um, and then each of these legs can kind of be taken on and off for um, storage and you know to get it from place to place. Um, yeah, so we're just kind of working on adding some texture to it, um, adding some like it needs to pop on stage. Black is a tricky color on stage; it's going to disappear. So we'll go and add some highlights, um, texturize it. There's also going to be this originally started as a neck piece, but we're going to make a larger version that I hope doesn't hit Yoshi in the head. It doesn't hit light <laughs> that will then sit behind this. Um, bigger, wider, but this is the idea as well. That it just has this sort of almost like a moving throne even um, <laughs> for that kind of impact of the entrance. Awesome. And then, yeah, this will have it'll be more of a um, kind of domed shape once we fill in with some mesh fabric and other details. So we're still working on uh, getting that together. Yoshi, can you give us a little twirl to give people an idea of what it'll yes. look like on stage? I'll be back. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you.